Well, uh, Reverend Dr. Bill, uh, you know, uh, every time I think I've heard it all, uh, uh, something new pops up in terms of uh, world and national news mm -hmm. that really, it really knocks me over. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it, in a way, it doesn't surprise me, but it infuriates me just the same. Recently, the United States Congress, which happens to be predominantly Republican, unfortunately. And which are on vacation for five I was just going to say, they just took a five-week vacation, and they I hear they did not pass any bill this summer. Oh, yes, they did. Oh, they did? For the 33rd time, they passed uh, to repeal Obamacare. Oh, okay. Oh, a negative. Thirty-third time. So they did. So before they took their lo the their long, undeserved five-week vacation. They've been on vacation while they're working. They're always on vacation. They don't do much. When Newt Gingrich was the Speaker of the House, they only worked two days a week. When Nancy Pelosi came in, she put them back on five days. Oh gosh. But they. But now, since since they're Republicans. They're always taking vacation, a five-week vacation. Because they're lazy. A five-week vacation. And they make about $170,000 a year, uh, not counting perks, and they get free, the best health care for free. And, and they, they get a nice juicy pension when they retire. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All these uh, frills and, and, and perks, and, and plus one hundred and seventy grand a year, and they work less than part-time. If you want to compare it to the to the average job in the United States, I would say a less than part-time hours. Well, if you're talking about Republicans, <laughs> they are there not to work. Obviously, that is that is what they that is what they do. They don't want the government to work. They are trying to shrink it so that they can drown it in a bathtub. They want to. They want excuses. They, they do a self-sabotaging job on the United States government, so they can shrink it down to fit under an electron microscope, and they have an excuse to complain about big government. That's why, now. Mr. George W. Bush. Aha! Uh -huh, I told you, big government's no good. Aha! Uh -huh. Put into all the agencies people who were incompetent. What was that dude's name uh, Which one? in charge of FEMA during uh, Hurricane Katrina? The horse? Uh, Ooh, until it a hunt? The horse judge or whatever the hell he was? Well, he obviously didn't give a shit about the poor of in, course in, in, not. in New Orleans. <laughs> they are in there to, to not do the job of that particular agency. Like someone from George W. Bush's administration who was put into an EPA. Yeah. Into the EPA. Well... He's not going to t take care of our uh, 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 air. He's going to make sure, like uh, when Bush was there, the Clear Skies Amendment. Yeah, they, they take care of air. Which allowed the big businesses to pollute more. They do take care of air, hot air from the Congress, expelled from the Congress. That, that's when the, uh, the elitist uh, hoity-toity Barbara Bush, with her George Washington wig on her head, <laughs> had said that uh, uh, the poor should be thankful and it's actually a step upward for them by sleeping on the floor of the New Orleans Superdome on the football field on, on the um, AstroTurf. It's a step up for them. They should be thankful they got that. Exactly. I'm sure she ate pretty good in that mansion of hers, Barbara Bush. But anyway, and of course... Just like, she, uh, just like uh, owning the horse for Romney's wife <laughs> is therapy for her multiple sclerosis. Oh, therapy? How is the horse therapy? You mean the horse that prances? Yeah, the do, do, dressage. Do, 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 do. dressage. How is that therapy for her? It ain't, she but does, they use it that way. It's therapy to watch the horse prance around? Or <laughs> even if you ride the horse, you don't, you don't ex, ex, they're exert They're trying any. to make, since their lifestyle is so extravagant, they try in any way they can to make it look blue collar, like, blue -collar? like it's yours, you know, like with George W. Bush and, when he was right. running. 
Hey, I'd like to have a beer with him. I could have a beer with George W. Oh, you, Bush. You mean uh, Mitten Romney, uh, the one that portrays himself as a, a real American patriot? Yeah, he he's a patriot. He, all his money is offshore. He doesn't pay taxes. He outsources American jobs. And it, oh, he's a real patriot. You see those jeans he wears? Well, he wants to be a regular folk. Yeah. Like GW. But he can't because he's a fight ass. And exactly. he walks around like a tight ass. A, 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 a right wing Republican is tighter than a crab's ass. Because uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman explained to me that a clam does not really have an ass. So I can't say clam's ass anymore. Crab's ass. You know, if, if they're so tight and stingy. Uh, uh, they pinch a penny so hard both heads and tails are on the same side. Well, for instance... Uh, <laughs> Keeping in that vein, uh, the sequestration uh, thing that they voted on, they all voted on it, the yeah. Republicans too, that if they couldn't get uh, a budget together and everything, that these uh, cuts, automatic cuts would come into effect. And that would involve the uh, military and uh, other things. Well, you know, they don't want to cut the military because that's a problem. You know, jobs and then big private contractors. But hey, we'll cut Medicaid. Now, who's on Medicaid? Poor. Poor children, which is like the, the majority, the disabled, and the elderly. Same, eight, 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 right. Disabled is about 18 Same thing with food stamps, right? Yeah. Kids. That's, that's okay to cut. Yeah, That's like, okay. like when Chris Christie is talking about, you know, his campaign commercial, that uh, talking about all the wasteful spending that he uh, eliminated. The wasteful, wasteful spending happens to be social programs for the poor. It's not the, the Wall Street uh, subsidy bailouts for the, his rich friends. Oh, no. It's not that. It's not the bloated military. Oh, no. It's programs, compassionate programs that help the poor which happened to make up a tiny percentage of the whole budget. Uh, oh, by the way, GW, what did he say about the uh, Hurricane Katrina victims? They, they did not evacuate quick enough? Some bullshit excuse? Some garbage. Some ridiculous excuse, yeah. yeah. But anyway... Um, they couldn't evacuate. They had no cars. Oh, they were the cars. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have cars. No. Was he going to send army helicopters to get all of them? No, 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 no. And look how long it took to get the... Uh, the uh, National Guard down there. Sure. Because, now, as I say, that dude, that horse dude in FEMA, in charge of FEMA, wanted to do, didn't want the government to do anything. They want to do it with private contractors. Everything. They want the government to pay private contractors it, to do the government's work. Everything's privatization with Republicans. That's and right. Privatization is a fiasco that never works. It never works. Well, it works in one way because then uh, when they get the jobs, the private uh, <laughs> the companies, they pay uh, into their coffers, into just, Republican coffers. Just like trickle-down economics from the patron saint of right-wing conservative Republicans, Ronald Reagan, never w was meant to work. As you can see, Ronald Reagan uh, urinating on America. It's actually siphoned up to the rich, to the elitist 1% economics. It, there is no trickle down. Maybe pistol down, as you could see, their 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 hero of of the GOP greedy old party, the hero Ronald Reagan, pissing on America. Now, is it true, uh, uh, sir, that um, a law was passed or, or a bill was passed in Congress that makes peaceful protesting by Americans illegal? They cannot peacefully peacefully protest any longer. The National Defense Authorization Act. All right. And Mr. Obama signed it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And There's your two-party system. For instance, your right. your pizza. If pizza went into the uh, chicken coops of a large a company right. to show the cruelty to the animals, they would be regarded as terrorists. What if they uh, eco terrorists? Yeah. Well, of course the the uh, the, the livestock uh, farmers would not allow Peter to come in with cameras, so Peter would have to sneak in, right? Exactly. That's how the setup is. 
Yeah. So making, making the sneak in, just like with whistleblowers, making the whistleblowers actually illegal. See? So and that way it protects the big, so, the big boy. So if somebody, if an American who supposedly has freedom of speech wanted to go to the, eh, let's say, the New York Times, or what was the other newspaper? Washington Post? Yeah, let's say New York Times. Wall Street Journal. Or the Newark Star Ledger and blew the whistle on uh, what's really going on in American government, then that means they can, what, arrest that person? Well, what, had, what just happened with the FDA? The FDA has been charged, uh, found, that they had something like 85,000 emails or whatever that they were uh, uh, looking at from a couple of whistleblowers or a few whistleblowers. So I guess that means illegally our, our First Amendment rights are shot to hell. Of course, didn't George Bush listen in to all the phone calls? Yes. And have ATT and all, all the, the Verizon and everything uh, to do it for them? And so, then and then they passed the law that exonerated them after the fact, yeah. so they couldn't be prosecuted. Sure, I there's mean, no constitution anymore. I mean, it's as George Bush said, it's just a goddamn piece of paper. Yeah, and you, uh, uh, they, they, they can arrest peaceful, peacefully protesting young college girls and pepper mace them and spray them in the face with pepper spray. They can arrest them, but not one Goldman Sachs boy, not one Goldman Sachs person has been arrested and or and jailed and jailed. And the business Convicted. is broken up, bankrupt, receivership, whatever, and taken over by we, the people, who, oh, by the way, yeah. are the government. Now, all of this talk about how everybody hates the government. Well, the government is us. Yeah, people forget that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how macho it is to have a bunch of uh, big uh, uh, policemen uh, either kick in the face or pepper mace a little young, whatever yeah, they are, uh, twenty-one-year-old uh, girls from college peacefully protesting. Oh, that's real macho. Once, once you instill the them and us attitude into the cops and militarize them, that's what you get. No longer do they serve and protect. They do serve and protect the big boys, however. Now, uh, uh, so it's, it's, it's accurate to state that uh, they should call this country the fascist states of America. Correct. This is a fascist country, has been for a long time. Fascism, clear and simple definition. When the corporations are married to the government, fascism. Now, now what's with that, that woman, that link she sent me, that she's trying to say that the rich have the burden of taxation. So she sends me that, that link from the government okay. that, that shows, did you read that last link? No, because the link didn't show up. No, no, the one below that, the one below that. It on didn't the, show up. No, the one on the bottom showed up. I don't know. It, no, all right. Uh, the people Point that are is, the people that are right wing flamers that try to get under my skin and under the skins of my supporters who insist that the rich in America are paying uh, the bulk in taxes and say and say they can prove it too. Where is the proof? Well, she that's what that link was. Well, there's no proof there because it can't be proven. How can you say that they're paying more? when uh, they're paying 35% today, and it was 94% just a little while ago. 94? That's correct. Not 91, 94. 94, 92, 91, 74. Okay. Well, my, 50, 28. A friend, a friend of mine says 91%. 35, he and says, 39 uh, uh, point something friend, under uh, Clinton. A friend of mine uh, said that, um, well, actually, John Starodumsky of, uh, 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 Honest Craft Beer Review says that 91% what it, it sounds a little punitive for the rich to pay. Why? Personally, I don't feel I I, I don't feel Why? So, What's I, the I don't really the, care if the rich pay 91%. I, that's what he said. 
Yeah, but why? I don't know. Why is it punitive? If you did wonders today for the economy. Yeah, during uh, FDR, Truman, and Eisenhower, right? Yeah. If you make a billion, let's say you make a billion dollars a year. All right. Mm -hmm. And we want to take away ninety percent of that. That leaves you with what? Hundred billion. Yeah, sounds good to me. Are you hurt? Hell no. <laughs> well, then what's the complaint? But if you, if they, yeah, you but know, if you tax the middle class, if you put the burden on the middle class, which has been in over thirty years, that hurts. Of course, because it's relative. That that's what is out of this 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 the debate altogether. Relativity. And small businesses. You take a, that's what they, the Mr. For, uh, Forbes and his stupid ten percent uh, flat. Uh, flat tax. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. I make a million dollars a year. You take away ten percent, leave me with nine hundred thousand dollars. What about the guy who makes ten thousand dollars a year, and you take away his ten percent, he's making nine thousand dollars a year. Where's the relativity? Where's the relativity? Where's the fairness there? So this this woman, this uh, right wing flamer, she hasn't done her homework. She, uh, she does not know a damn thing about history. So was it was I uh, was I smart to tell her that she's simply believing uh, conservative propaganda and Tea Party lies? What you should have said was Thessalonians five twenty one prove it. Prove all things. And she would have to go back in history, and she would see that you can't prove it. Because, just like with the corporation taxes, supposedly it's 35% today for corporation yeah. taxes. Well, it was once 50%. Is, is, is 35 less than 50? Yes. Yes. So then where is these big problems so that we, they keep saying so if you, punitive? So if you look at the percentage rate of a fair tax system on the wealthy it's relative because they're pulling in billions like look at the look point at is general. our tax system is progressive the more you make the more you pay if you don't want to pay then don't make it that's correct well General Electric gee General Electric hasn't paid any taxes in a long time that's correct and 60 percent of corporations don't including Mitt Romney I bet well, Mitt Romney, uh, he's paying only 13 point something percent. He only pays capital gains taxes. So 60 percent of corporate America doesn't pay any taxes at all. So I don't know where these know-it-alls, these fools that, that post uh, gibberish on the internet, where they get their information from. They, they don't need to get it. Goebbels. You tell a lie, you make sure it's a big lie, and they tell it often enough, enough and people will believe it. Yeah, not that's German, what it is. The Third Reich, uh, Joe, Joseph Goebbels' uh, technique. The Republicans know it well. And they utilize it. Well. Okay, now, before we get started... Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I didn't know we were on the air. What? We were blabbering here. I wasted all my... No, you don't waste anything. Not being on the air. No, no, we'll leave it in. I'm not going to edit this out. It's too valuable. Oh, gee, th I'm sorry. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I am your host for Progressive Discussions, James P. Madonna. It happens to be Saturday, August the 4th, 2012. Yes, it is a very hazy, hot, and humid, a very humid and very hot day. Uh, what is it going to be, in the 90s? I think it's going to be 89 or 88. Yeah, but very high humidity. Someone humid told me 92. Very high humidity. And what happened to the thunderstorm we were supposed Tomorrow. to have? Oh, it's going to be tomorrow now. You know, a weather a weather person, otherwise known as a meteorologist, is really the best job to have because you could be wrong every day, and then you can just blame it on nature, on God. You know, and you get paid good money for you know your personality, all dressed up, smiling, you know, talking longer than you have to instead of just give the news, <laughs> and they get their info from the National Weather Bureau anyway. Which, which is what my uh, my little um, weather radio, my NOAA weather radio gets, except without all the bullshit. But uh, I just want to formally introduce my uh, co-host and mentor, the, the very founder of uh, Newsletter Censored in 1977, 
the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. We pipe him aboard the Progressive Discussions pirate ship. Ahoy, matey, R. Are you in need of some R and R? Rest and relaxation. R and R. R. Be buckle. Anyway, thank you, thank you. Uh, um, the illustrious Pope of the Internet. Now, uh, I just want to say one last thing. I've been doing some serious thinking, and I've come to the conclusion that. Uh, middle-class Americans, um, the foolish, deluded, deceived lemmings, the people in the red states that vote Republican are mentally challenged. You have to be mentally challenged when you you don't do your research and you continue to believe lies and you vote based on a ridiculous unproven ideology instead of proven facts and uh, your ideology uh, uh, is more important to you than survival, the economy, the job market, a roof over your head, food on the table. You care more about the stupid ideology coming from the Republicans. So yes, these, these people in America that will uh, unfortunately vote for Mitt Romney the G.W. Bush number two, the, 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 the bubble-headed booby, they are mentally challenged. Or deceived. deceived. Revelation 12.9. Well, if you're not rich and greedy and stingy, then I'm you have to be mentally challenged to vote for a Republican because it's not in their best interest to vote for a Republican. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we hear this all the time. But the fact of the matter is the Republicans have done a dang good job of uh, teaching those people uh, that Democrats are baby killers, secular humanists, and the devils, the demons. You know what, that, that banner was very popular last night on Facebook. The Chick-fil-A banner? Chick-fil-A. The Chick-fil-A, the, uh, the right-wing fundamentalists, so-called born-again, holy roller, evangelical Christians that tend to vote Republican because they're religious, they're zealot religious nuts, they will protest and get all upset uh, uh, over gay marriage and gay rights and uh, 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 abortion. I mean, like, let's say the gays. They'll rally, they'll protest, they'll get together and jump up and down and scream, but they don't. They won't. I've never seen them get together to uh, help the poor and the homeless, you know, and 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 you know to get get out there and, and volunteer at a, at a food pantry or something, soup kitchen. Well, how about the fact that they'll take? They won't do that. They'll take one thing out of the Old Testament, such as, uh, you know, God not wanting gays to get together, but they don't take out the Sabbath day. You're very preoccupied with the Sabbath issue. Because uh, that is the big thing. That is the mark of the beast. I'm concerned. That is how we tell them. I'm more concerned. From God's people. I'm more concerned about the people paying attention to the Bible where it says for the rich to give and help the poor. I'm more well, concerned about that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen no. in a country no. that uh, 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 decides the issue of Citizens United in favor of big corporations and big money. And that's not going to happen. Are those the people that made corporations persons? Gave they them, did that also. Gave them personhood? Yes, that's that's no. it. Without it, any precedent, precedent, by the way, now, there is no legal precedent for that. None. No, no, you can't no. point to one legal uh, 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 issue that claims that. So they just concocted it? No. Some idiot wrote it on the head note. Makes no sense. Of a decision in uh, uh, Santa Clara 
back then in the oh. 1800s, a railroad uh, and, and property issue. And he wrote it on the head note that corporations are persons under the 14th Amendment. Ever since then, it had nothing to do with the law. But ever since then, since the uh, since the railroads had paid off the judges and etc. The people and got, especially that guy who wrote that down. The people got railroaded, sure. I mean, the next that. law that came up, you know, stereo, stereo decisis mm -hmm. said that that was precedent back then, so this is precedent. This is precedent. It's the same way with Kidda versus the uh, uh, director of uh, uh, workman's compensation or whatever the hell that law is, where, where the, it, it takes on the the social security's definition of what is a disability. Uh. And uh, if you can work, you are not uh, disabled. And what is my, uh, what is my uh, illustration which I use often? If you are a man with no arms and no legs, and when uh, George Steinbrenner was alive, if he gave you a job as second base for the Yankees. As second base. Yeah, as not, second not playing base. second base. <laughs> as second base for the Yankees. When you go home at night and look in the mirror, you have no arms and you have no legs. You are disabled. What if you? No matter what the law says. What if you? There's no way you can surpass a minimum wage part-time job, and 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 of course you can't live nowadays on a minimum wage part-time job. What if you cannot surpass that? They still will throw you off the. Uh, the uh, the disability checks the the welfare the dis uh, social security disability like like knowing that you can't afford to survive on a minimum wage part time job as long as you have a job they'll for as long as they have it measured out they'll throw you off you are no longer disabled and I believe it was Justice Roberts we're supposed to live in a treehouse was either Alito or Roberts yeah I think it was Roberts he uh, used to work for Toyota as a lawyer. There was a case that came before the court. Right. Uh, and this woman being disabled. And Robert said, mm -hmm. if you can brush your teeth, you are not disabled. That's just an excuse to uh, throw... Of course, just like the Social Security thing, it's a bookkeeping that, thing. That's an excuse to throw everybody off of social services and welfare. They don't want... I guess they want to... This is mass genocide by the right wing. Close the program down. When it comes to the poor. Close the program down. Close it down, let people starve. Yeah, exactly. You know? And that Republicans love to say, oh, why don't you go to your family for help and your local church? Oh, Sure, that's that. That's really going to guarantee you you're gonna, that it's going to. That's really going to pay your living expenses. Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, it's a way of just sweeping the poor under the rug, and that's it. Now, or culling the herd. Culling the herd. That's well, true. didn't they take? Didn't they take Jesse Ventura's conspiracy theory? theory? Uh, true TV took the show off the air before they, they before season three. They, season three is already made. And, and in storage, but but nobody got to see season three because True TV was forced, possibly I think, to take it off the air. And as so, I've often said, if you're telling the truth, you're going to have a small audience, and you won't be on the air for long, etc., etc. Is this why? This is not a country that deals in the truth. This is why uh, uh, God's flock, God's original church will always be small. Correct. Now, uh, is it accurate to say that uh, capitalism has uh, inherent corruption in it? Eventually, all capitalist systems become corrupt, or they start corrupt, or, or is it... It is corrupt from the beginning. I okay. tell, What's that illustration I give you all the time? If I'm the boss, and you come to me for a job, I'm going to hire you only if you produce for me more than I pay you. Is that fair? No, you should be paid for your services. Well, then that's how, that's how capitalism begins. 
Buy low, sell that's high. It's a one, that's one of its inherent flaws. So the old saying about the snake oil salesman, buy low, sell high, you know, uh, that is a very accurate description of the capitalist mentality. Capitalism is a system which gives all the breaks to those who have the capital. Oh, okay. Very simple. And if you don't have it, that's correct. You don't have it. <laughs> now, every these guy, these big uh, places on Wall Street, over there, these investment banks. Once upon a time, their job was, you go to them with a product. Hey, I have this thing. I call it an iPad. You know, I'd like to get some money to start a business to produce these iPads. It was their job at that time. To invest in you and lend you venture capital so that you could start this business. Right. Of course that didn't, uh, after a while they, be, they be all became public uh, entities and they all started using other people's money uh, to invest and speculate and take risks and everything and that's what happened on Wall Street. And they piled, they bond, bundled up all of these mortgages and etc. And and pretty soon uh, these mortgages, it, it CDOs and, and 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 whatevers, they weren't worth anything. And there they were on all these big banks, books, worthless. And what did Mr. Paulson do? He come around and gave them seven hundred billion dollars, and then after that, Bernanke, and we've been giving them trillions ever since, because they were bright, bankrupt, all of them, insolvent. They should have all been broken up, taken over by we the people. Yeah, if 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 you if you don't follow the rules, and and you're you're deregulated, and you uh, they didn't have any rules because they paid the, the the politicians to get rid of the rules. So ill-gotten gains is uh is what they they run he by they operate by. Who makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. That is true. It's in the Bible. It's right. And 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 the uh, as the nail sticketh between two stones, so does sin sticketh to buying and selling. Yes, because there's a there's an inherent flaw a flaw right there. So so because as you said before, I I bought this low and I want to sell it high to you. So think twice, Republicans, before you start calling God and Jesus, uh, you know, a uh, 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 capitalist. <laughs> they can call them what they want. You know, they're thinking but that the they're Republican. Is, they're not Republican at all. The problem. They're not political. They're at not all, political. Number one. But they, they, they. God is not a respecter of persons. But they, uh, they, talk like God is on their side. Well, then the problem is you when you believe that talk. Yeah, we're talking and about. There is the problem. With we're the talking about counterfeit Christians, phonies. This is what we're talking about. Uh, the white horse of the apocalypse, the false church, false prophets. That is the, the GOP, the greedy old party. Now let's let's go right to the first article. You got a juicy one there? Oh, I don't know about. Juicy. Well, they're supposed to be juicy on top. Hell no. Well, I, I don't like to hear. I don't want to waste time with frivolous articles. Oh no, no, no. There's nothing frivolous, my boy. Nothing. Okay. You see, Chick Fil A. You call you call that frivolous? Uh, if you if you were talking about Chick Fil A as a company and and how tasty their their garbage chicken is, no. Yes, if you're talking about the the protesting, no, that's not frivolous. President Obama bought his, brought his economic message to the key battleground state of Florida on Thursday, asking voters to reject the trickle down fairy dust. He says Republican. Mr. Romney is trying to sell them. Trickle. They, you know, Mitt, Mitt Romney should call himself a broad, a broad certified urologist. Dick, Dr. Dick Trickle. Dr. Dick Trickle. That's a pretty funny name, right? Dick Trickle is good. Dr. Dick Trickle. Broad certified urologist. Romney's economic, economic plans grant tax cuts for wealthy people. Obama told the crowd in Winter Park racking up a cost that he says would land on the middle class, 
with no net benefit for them. The idea that the tax cuts would pay for themselves by way of a massive boom in the economy, Obama said, is fairy dust. And it's been fairy dust for the last 12 years! <laughs> that the GOP has tried to sell in the past, but which hasn't worked. See now, if he wouldn't, if he wouldn't have used in the past, if he would have said in the last 12 years, it would make a better impact. Mm -hmm. He's asking you to pay more so that people like him can pay less. Obama said. Obama's words, nearly drowned out by a chorus of boos from the audience, echoed his message during the campaign swing in Ohio earlier in the week. Obama said the heart of Romney's plan is about giving tax cuts to the wealthiest 1% of all households. Mr. Romney claims he's going to give this tax cut, Obama said, and that he's going to bring down the deficit. So the question is, who do you think is going to get the bill? He asked the crowd, which shouted back, We do. This is a smart crowd, Obama said. You do. Oh, yeah, they think it's just the same old crap if Mitt Romney gets in. It's such but it gets sold every time. See, it's not a problem of Romney, George W. Bush. And the guys on top. It's the American it's people. It's the problem of the supporters who first, keep believing this crap. First of all, less people vote than less people in America vote than don't vote. I mean, that's 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 the number one problem. People need to make make it their business to get out and vote for the big elections and uh, uh, vote out, of course, the uh, the right wing. Uh, that's number one. Number two is they're voting to cut their own throats when they vote for a Republican uh, and they happen to be poor or middle class. They don't have Again, your best interest. You're not in a high bracket. You're not a greedy, stingy elitist. So you're not part of the 1% or the top 20%. So why vote for a Republican? I'll tell you why. Because these people are under the spell of, of ideology and they're crazy religious nut cult they're under the spell of putting it uh, putting it in regard to the Bible Satan Revelation 12 9 they're totally deceived there are 2,000 or over 2,000 uh, Christian denominations in this country that many yeah they can't all be right no okay Satan, Satan is working through the churches that's correct well, but the, all they care about is is bashing gays and being bigots and racists and as I said and, and, and anti-women uh, women's rights they're too busy preoccupied with bigotry and hatred that they're they're totally ignoring the priorities what's important that's great they'll take one thing from the Old Testament like I said concerning gays but what about the Sabbath what about that they will take they will take uh, one uh, small well not small because they're all equal yeah they'll still but take they'll take one uh, ten commandment of the ten commandments and they'll forget about the first one thou shalt have no other gods before me and love of money is idolatry and of course they'll pay attention and having this habit on the wrong day is right. celebrating worshiping the wrong God mark 7 verse 7 through 9 and and God as well as Jesus always told the rich to help and give to the poor they ignore that as well if we had our economy set up biblically there would be no poor yeah, because Micah 4 verse 4 in the Millennium they shall all have their own land and their own vine, their own way to make a living. That's called security and freedom. Something that the Republicans preach in this country, but cannot have, we cannot have it without security. 
And that security comes when you have your own land and your own way to make a living. True. You are not then dependent on anyone. And, as also in the millennium, God states very clearly, no one shall make his living off the back of another. God's not even crazy about the poor being charged interest. Usury is not in the Bible's Usury. economics. Yeah, and the and the uh, the wealth of the earth, the earth's natural resources, belongs to God, not to man. It doesn't belong to Exxon Mobil. No. Or Monsanto, or whatever. That's great. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you people, you newcomers that are wondering what this is, this is a black thorn. Uh, Shillelagh, imported from Ireland. It is me prop. It is me prop. Anyway, you got what? Uh, uh, I don't have a uh, short article. No, I don't have a short one. To Not get really. To All right. Well, we'll, we'll so save we'll it for wait, uh, when we come back. Because the uh, next uh, two articles are going to deal with a man, a beast, who actually uh, gave birth to this economics that the Republicans love so much. Really? Milton Friedman. Oh. The, the, Egan, the Chicago Economics School. I saw a picture of him. Uh, he, um, he looks like a, like, 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 he's a funny looking old skin flint. Oh. Yes. Bald and with glasses. Yeah, with a big nose. We got a picture of him. With a hawk nose. We got a picture he, of him. He's a greedy bastard. Him, he's like, uh, him and his wife. He's the, the, the male version of Ayn Rand, right? Well, oh, he, worse, he worse follows than, her uh, philosophy. Worse so than Ayn Rand. Rand. Friedman's uh, economics philosophy is uh, much akin so, so to is So, uh, is he the one that uh, taught, that said, uh, like, uh, selfishness is a virtue and greed is good? He didn't say that. He, he couches that in uh, economic theory. We'll see. All right, we'll take a little break. I think I got I got a uh, a pro and a con here. So so he launched the whole. Um, no, it's been going on for you know. Yeah, no. Uh, well, of, co of course, when when J P Morgan was he around, he just gives it credibility. Yeah, of course, the usury and greed was around oh, in, in early nineteen uh, hundreds uh, with J P Morgan. Was that that's right after the Industrial Revolution? It's been all around. It's been around for you know, yeah. as, as, since the inception yeah. of the country. So uh, yeah, FDR was fighting pretty much the same crap that uh, that we're dealing with today. Right? Yeah. You know, and of course his second bill of rights would have solved a lot of problems, FDRs, but uh, he couldn't get it passed. Gee, I'm not, I'm not surprised. All right. Dr. Bill, I knew that was going to happen. The price of produce is rising and they're blaming the drought this summer. And I bet it is, it is rising far above a normal rate. And, it is and, rising and because of speculation in commodities. Speculation Pure in simple. commodities. Like the price of nuts. Speculation why? in commodities. N nuts are extremely uh, healthy snack. But well, why did they become so expensive and for so long? Way before the, uh, the drought. H how many years have nuts been ridiculously high? A long time. A long time. And um, I mean, is the, is the nut, are the nut trees endangered species? No. On this planet? No. Yeah. Yeah, gee, I mean, they they have seasons, they have growth seasons, fruit-bearing seasons, just like, you know, mangoes, avocados, apples, plums, etc., cherries. I mean, you know, they... It's a way for the big boys to make money. It's as simple as that. Just like me. You know what it could be tied into? Ever, I remember when the uh, high-protein, low-carbohydrate diet, the Atkins diet, became very popular. I remember the price of eggs shot up all of a sudden. Yeah, that's then true. the price of nuts shot up because Atkins was telling people the only low carb snacks that you can have are nuts, seeds, pork and, rinds. and pork rinds. I remember his very words. Good. The pork rinds never really went up. Yeah. Because they're pork rinds. I mean, people, I don't know, have a stigma, you know, about eating 
pork. I think pork rinds are are delicious, and they're you know it's a high protein, um, um, naturally low carb you know uh, snack. But nuts went up, the eggs went up, and uh, the eggs came down to normal after the diet was out there a while. But the nuts have stood you know uh, very high in price nuts and seeds you know price gouging that's the word I was looking for price gouging and they have been gouging the public for quite a while so don't tell me that not you know this is a problem with the nut trees because everything is uh, well even if fruit in general is is high even at a farmers market and if you get organic fruit forget about it but I mean, the price of uh, citrus, I mean, well, you know, I mean, that, that bad winter they had in Florida that froze the citrus crop, that's, that's been long gone. So what's their excuse now with the citrus growers? And, and, uh, because once the price goes up, it never goes down. You see, you see how capitalism is, folks? Like right now. It's a game. In this recession which is still going on. It's supposed to be prices going down, not up. Right. You know? But it's not. Apparently not. They're using it as an excuse. What happened last year is still being used as an excuse. You know, the, uh, the, extra, the exceptionally cold winter in Florida, oh, the citrus crops were affected. They were all they died and you know the uh, hey that was last winter or was it the winter before it was a while back whatever that 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 uh, uh south it's florida has seen seen freezing temperatures it was still a, import the uh, fruits right so what's what the, the hell do we need to import lemons and, and and oranges for yeah what's the deal with uh, all the other uh, fruit that's uh ri that's very high in price Plums, nectarines, peaches, so on and so on. Citrus, I mean, you know. Our economy has not run stable-wise on the uh, measure of uh, supply and demand for a long time. Now we're going to read about Mr. Uh, Friedman in a while. Oh, the, the other dean. And the other... Wrote, we will uh, we will uh, learn about the supply side, you know, economics. Supply side economics. Uh, so we had um, the cul the key culprits in the demise of the United States. Of course, the uh, the the demon uh, uh, was Milton Friedman, um, the, uh, the 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 Medusa, Ayn Rand, the witch, Ayn Rand. She was a negative contributor uh, with her uh, the ideology coming from the both of them. And then you had Ronald Reagan shifting the tax burden from the rich to the middle class and poor. And uh, then G.W. Bush did his dirty deeds uh, in eight years. And now you got the other stooge, uh, Mitt Romney. The and the idiot puppet. that was at the helm of the Fed for 18 years or so. Yeah. Okay. I want to let me get this out of the way. Uh, this gentleman right next to me is a self-portrait, an oil painting self-portrait of the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, <clears throat> my co-host and mentor. It was done by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman because he is a fine watercolor and gouache artist. You can see the William J. Eisenman co collection by typing in William J. Eisenman collection uh, at your browser, like Google. And uh, you'll see the slideshow, and uh, if you like something, you know, uh, uh, email him from uh, newslettercensor.com and ask him if the painting is still available. And if it is, you can uh, acquire one. Uh, you can give him a minimum gift of $500 or more. Uh, you can work something out with him, and uh, you can acquire the painting, and he will send it to you. It is, it is an original signed by uh, William J. Eisenman. Now, this is the backbone of our organization. This is the very best way to join 
our organization, the very best way to be a part of our organization, founded in 1977 by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, Newsletter Censored. Okay. Newsletter Censored contains more information than the uh, our websites or our talk shows. Uh, it, uh, it deals with the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, uh, uh, human sexuality, and child rearing. Um, this is the new uh, issue, uh, volume 120, titled Screwed by William J. Eisenman, Ph.D., uh, followed by sometimes tidbits if this room, and then uh, The God Project by William J. Eisenman, Doctor of Divinity, and then last but not least, as a bonus, Sexuality, a Holistic Approach by William J. Eisenman, Ph.D. You need newsletter censored in the end times. You need newsletter censored to teach you how to defeat a conservative. Okay. And uh, if you go to newslettercensored.com, uh, click on the printable order form, and uh, with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. Um, there you will see uh, Dr. Bill for president. Yes, he's running for a third time as a progressive independent. In order to get the corruption out of politics, we need to get the money out of politics. And uh, Dr. Bill will show you how to uh, write in a candidate. Very important. And uh, if you go to Google and you type in um, censored, um, on demand or the God Project on demand archive classics you can listen to at your leisure as many times as you want all of the past readings of Newsletter Censored and the God Project so and then you'll at the radio station which is at the top of newslettercensored.com the link to our radio station you will see the uh, the airtime schedule so get it now this is the best way to join us. You need newsletter censor. All right. Now, let me make myself useful. And um, now we will read the very deep and very informative articles about one of the biggest right-wing demons of all time, the ugly... Uh, 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 chicken-headed looking, bald chicken-headed looking Milton Friedman. Libertarians argue yeah. that in a perfect world, the little or no government interference in the marketplace is the best and most efficient policy to follow. However, they appear unwilling to recognize that we do not live in a perfect economic world. We live in a political world where various business and social groups vie to influence fiscal, monetary, and social policy. For example, Milton Friedman argued that there would be no need to legislate against domestic monopolies if we had no tariffs or labor unions by exposing our domestic industries to foreign competition. I would like to see any administration, Democratic or Republican, agree to follow such a policy. Of course they love that, the elitist corporations, no unions and uh, you know, the deregulation and uh, what, what the other thing you just said. Uh, well, he doesn't want any regulation from the government. Milton Friedman. No, he wants to do what he wants. <laughs> you know, make people work for chicken feed, outsource jobs, uh, be a crook. He believes that the marketplace will take care of all of that. Marketplace. You see how well the marketplace took care of Wall Street meltdown? Some would eliminate the Federal Reserve's ability to create money out of thin air. However, in their important 
a monetary history of the United States, Friedman and his wife, Anna Schwartz, argued that the failure of the Federal Reserve to ease the supply of money was a leading cause of the Great Depression. While easing the money supply is inflationary, it benefits not only the wealthy, but also homeowners and other debtors whose current home values are depressed, freeing up funds they can spend on goods and services, creating jobs for others. I'd like to uh, re-read that sentence. Creating jobs for, for others. those who believe that the wealthy create jobs which they in a vacuum. Which they talk about all the time in their campaigns. That's correct. All but, the Republicans talk about that. Now, here it is. Freeing up funds they can spend on goods and services which create jobs for others. Yeah, the, so it is demand that creates jobs, not the wealthy. Exactly. Yeah, because the wealthy, the only jobs they create for others is in China and India. Yeah. Well, now China. Well, that's creating them from their self, for themselves because yeah. that allows them to have cheaper wages paid. Yeah, it's not a self-serving thing. Self-interest, which is ungodly, unbiblical. But that's how uh, economics are conducted in America. And, and the great... Christian nation and doing everything offshore is not very patriotic Republicans keeping your money offshore and and jo sending jobs offshore Friedman is praised by recounting Friedman's exchange with the general Westmoreland William Westmoreland over the proposal to end the military draft Friedman was correct in pointing out that an all-volunteer army would require that its members receive market value and would be more efficient. But one has to ask what this country's recent history would have been like if the children of our middle class who were enjoying college life had been drafted to serve in Iraq and Afghanistan sure. instead. Another regarding this, regarding Milton Friedman. As one of the slaves, as Milton Friedman characterizes uh, military draftees, who served uh, during the Vietnam War, and despite my past thinking that an all volunteer army was a good idea, it appears to me now a significant mistake. The all-volunteer army has greatly increased America's defense costs and promoted armed adventurism by neoconservatives who believe all responses to foreign threats must be military. Common sense should suggest that diplomatic efforts are preferable to wars. As for Friedman's limited government, most liberals like me believe government should be large enough only to be effective. If the role of government is to protect its constituency, then government needs to be large enough to regulate markets. If anyone still believes that markets are self-correcting, they have slept through the banking abuses and crimes that caused the recent financial crisis. Left unregulated, oil companies flout safety rules and fill oceans and rivers with oil spills. Food producers sell products laced with harmful chemical additives and corporations spend fortunes to obtain special tax breaks and loopholes. All of which seems the antithesis of the free market. Mm -hmm. Wise public policies drive progress unwise ones do not. So citizens have a serious responsibility in choosing their legislative re representatives. In a time of massive, well-funded, professional misinformation campaigns, mm -hmm. Americans 
will have to rely on doing their own homework. Yeah, sure. Unlike your lady friend there, uh, with the tax issues, has not done. She's no friend of mine. She's just a. Tr uh, you know these. Um, it was on uh, Left Action Facebook page. All the um, the left wing progressive liberal organizations always seem to have a um, a uh, right wing conservative that slips through the crack and and slithers into the into the onto the page to cause trouble like a slippery eel and besides flamers uh, a lot of those people are paid they are paid to go on to the internet and, and give you the opposite of the truth they are paid to go on to wikipedia and change things that you might put up there which are the truth is this product part, part of their uh, conservative propaganda brainwashing the right wing conspiracy and is this why we always hear the uh, U.S. media giving face time to the right wing? Yeah. And not to the they progressives? Not to the liberals, the progress progressive liberals? Um, I have yet to see a U.S. Uh, news media camera and microphone go in front of uh, Senator Al Franken. Yet. I have, I've yet. I have yet to see it. We don't know what Al Franken is up to, actually. Well, he's been he's been busy. He just doesn't get FaceTime. Uh, by the way, uh, Michelle Bachman. Oh, that lunatic! She's on as, a witch hunt. As someone running against her really? in Minnesota. She has like she has a witch hunt against uh, yeah, yeah, gay, uh, gays. Is it the, gays? The uh, Muslim woman who works. Oh, for, Muslims! Yeah, 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 yeah. Muslim woman who works for uh, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, she has a problem with that? Yeah. She thinks she's a uh, terrorist. Just because she's a Muslim? Yeah. So she's uh, profiling? Yeah. So Republicans like to profile? Yeah. Isn't that uh, the same as bigotry? Uh, yeah, but Republicans are bigoted. They don't use the word bigot now. They, they are use racist. Profiling, huh? They are racist. Yeah, well, she's a it's racist. It's part of their agenda. If she's That's why they're so popular in the South. If she's assuming that this uh, assistant of Hillary Clinton is a is a, 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 a terrorist or an Al Qaeda, uh, uh, you know, uh, double agent, double agent, double agent, <laughs> spy for Al Qaeda, then she's profiling based on her religion. But she doesn't and gets away with it. Well, Arizona gets away with all the shenanigans they pull. That's correct. Right? With the sheriff... Uh, Opio. Opio. A too, pile of. Too bad he's, he's not... He's pile of. Too bad he's not from Ohio. Then he would be Sheriff Opio from Ohio. Right? That, that, would, yeah. that would sound cute. Yeah. Yeah, he's another racist. Anyway, Americans do not do their homework. Boss Hogg and Roscoe P. Coltrane. If they intend their votes to create public policies that will not be thwarted by the complexities, nuances, and dynamism of a modern economy, it will mean challenging one's own beliefs. Or deceptions, I might add. Challenge your deceptions. Uh, what is it, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. That's right. That's right. You're here, brother. The rich are different from you and me. Uh, Did you know that? Well, in, 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 in uh, yeah, and the fact that they don't have to worry about their uh, shelter or where their next meal or laugh is coming from or... <laughs> Or wasn't paying that, the bills, or but uh, wasn't that woman uh, saying yeah, to you, yeah. "Woe is me, woe is the poor, the rich, woe"? Yeah, you know, I gotta cry like like Stan Laurel. For, uh, my heart really bleeds for the rich, even if the rich were paying the original ninety-one percent tax rate. I gotta really <laughs> like Stan Laurel. <laughs> oh, my heart bleeds for you. You're breaking my heart. Uh, 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 you know, you idiots out there, you 1%, or even people making 250000 a year. 30%. 30%. You're, you're really breaking my heart that you got to pay so much in taxes, and you're still living the good life. 
And you can it. afford your own health insurance. And you can afford to in invest for your own retirement. So don't give me this bullshit, you know. I believe that the, the figure is somewhere around 70 million people on Medicaid in this country. That's almost one third of the population. Because, because now, what about all the middle class people that got laid off and got their homes foreclosed yeah. and, and have become poor? They, they joined they, the ranks of the poor. What are they, all scammers? Oh, they must be scammers. But what about or what, lazy? Now, what about the bullshit uh, uh, unemployment uh, percentage that the government gives you? What about all the people that have given up looking because they can't find a job? So they're taking off the statistics? Yes. Yes. So if the government says uh, there is a 10% a unemployment rate in a certain part of New... Right uh, now it's 8.3. Uh, it went up a little tick. Nationwide? Yeah. But is it really 8.3? Some of the figures are 23 million people are out, out of work. So that's more than 8.3, right? I don't know what it is. The well, figure is probably higher than that. Yeah, because of the people that uh, have exhausted their f uh, federal extensions. Yeah. To unemployment, which Republicans would would have never given them, given them. Republicans would not give you federal extensions; they'll just let you friggin' die. They, they whittled it down to starve. seventy-six weeks from ninety-six. They whittled it. Yeah. Ninety-six. Just to, a while ago. Ninety-six to seventy-six. That's correct. That's no help if there's no jobs out Republicans there. Republicans are not there to help. But there's no jobs out there. Republicans are not there to help. So I guess desperate people... They are there to drown the government in a bathtub. So I guess the poor are, are they're going to, they're going to be backed into a corner. They're, well, they're, they're going, idealism they're going to be, uh, they're going to get desperate like a wild animal's backed into a corner it and we're going to have to a get war. Americans desperate. Well, you know what? Then drop right. dead then. If you want to be a pussy, listen, if a, if a progressive liberal besides, doesn't want to grow guns. a backbone, then, then die. They got all the guns. I mean, that's another problem. Progressives don't have... <laughs> progressives are not members of the NRA, are they? That's correct. All, all, a union, by the way. All the bigots, One of the unions all the bigot, that the Republicans love. Fuck. All the bigoted, racist, uh, 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 red state rednecks that vote Republican because of their cult their crazy religious cult that they belong to. They have all the weapons. You know, the the, 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 the people that are, you know, nice, easy going, you know, and they're just trying to survive, they don't have any uh, rifles and... AK-47. You know, yeah, AK-47s, not not that I think... Show the fire. Uh, yeah, not, grenades, that, I, not you know. that I think a civilian citizen needs to have a military weapon, an automatic weapon. You know, but I mean, you know, at least a rifle or 12 gauge shotgun or a handgun, you know what I mean? Uh, In an ideal world, you wouldn't have a gun. What is the, I hope your answer is not like that idiot that told me we cops should be like the Bobbies in, in, in England and not carry guns at all. Some idiot told me that. I, I think well, I know what it is. Not if the other ones are armed. This guy was too much to the left. He was too liberal, like a friggin' flower child from the 60s, saying that, oh, the cops should, the cops should be like the Bobbies uh, that used to, you know, not have guns in well, England. why was it that the Bobbies <laughs> were idiot. able to get away with that at that time? How did they do their job if they don't have weapons? Well, they certainly did it. But how? I don't know how. But the I'm Keystone, the Keystone cops, you know, they're like, they're doing silent movies. They did their job back then. Listen. Something has changed. My uncle Artie from Venice, Italy by marriage, he was a, he used to say, <coughs> when the water starts to reach your nostrils, you begin to start swimming. Oh, okay? Now if you if well, what the, the hell you've been standing all the while for the water to get up to your nostrils? What I'm trying to huh. say is uh, uh Desperate times uh, call Require for desperate measures. Desperate measures, but that's. But what about when my conservative uncle Phil used to say, when the uh, when when times when things get tough, the tough get going. That's what they say. Something like that. When when the going gets tough, the tough get going. 
Yeah. But what if are you're they not tough? To? What? Where? Where are they going to go to? Where are you going to go? What if? What? This is the problem. Where are you going to go? What if? What if you don't? Have, you, you, yeah. Even if you're tough. This is the problem. What do you do? That I keep pointing out. There's no options. In our economic system. They use, the Republicans usually say something to the effect. Well, you're a slave if you're dependent on the government. What about the, uh, but all of a sudden, what about Wall Street bailouts? You're not a slave if you're dependent on a corporation for your paycheck. Yeah. Now, what's the difference? And what about when they're dependent on government to bail them out? Well, what's the difference? Welfare for the rich? Yeah, what's the difference? You're dependent yeah, on a corporation. I'm not bringing I know. You're dependent point. on a corporation. You're, you're, you're not a slave to be a sucker and to be dependent on a corporation to pay you some piddly, piddly measly little wage. Okay. But, you know, it's like. Uh, go ahead. The reason Finish I your brought point. it up was there is a problem in this economy, in capitalism, whatever you want to call it. There is a problem mm -hmm. that the average person must become dependent upon someone else to give him the lifeblood a paycheck so that he may survive there's a problem the umbilical cord is, is a problem is being attached to a corporation is a problem well and that comes about because we disobey one of the biblical rules under the economy that every man should have his own land and his own way to make a living it's not so hard. Why uh, in the 1800s? If you went out west, go west, young man, and you settled on some land, and you worked it for five years, it was yours. You owned it. I know why people went west. Government gave it to you. They heard there's gold in them dar hills. California gold rush. How long did that last? He that, who makes haste to become rich shall not be innocent. You think that you think the uh, people in the in the East Coast and uh, in the Midwest wanted to, uh, you know, uh, t uh, you know, ride in covered wagons uh, and and fight Indian attack and uh, deal with the mountains and the snow and the disease and and starvation, and uh, you think they wanted to just do it just to, to be pioneers for the fun of it? The problem... No, they heard about gold. Greed, greed. The problem is we live in a so-called civilization. Civilization does not uh, require or uh, 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 depend upon the rules of Spencerism, or as they call Darwinism. Uh -huh. Dog eat dog. But that's where we are. A civilization that has set up its economic system in dog eat dog fashion. And the big dogs already, as I point out many times with my monopoly analogy, suppose we got four people playing monopoly and we give one guy three thousand dollars to start the game and the other people one thousand. Of course he has a big advantage. Well that's what capitalism does. So the one percent of will always have the huge advantage. Thirty percent. 30% of America will have the, the advantage. Yeah. That's correct. That's 90 million people. And now that, uh, that includes people making 250,000 and up, right? That's correct. If you knew how many people make those wages, 
those people who make a lot less than that in America. It's pathetic. So the people carrying, pathetic. so people that are carrying the uh, the tax burden are people making less than two hundred and fifty thousand a year. That's correct. That's not fair. That's correct. Well, that's what happened under Reagan. Now, what what makes these idiot uh, holy class Americans think that by re voting for a Mitt Romney or voting in any Republican that that's going to make their lives better? As was if, seen, if, you, if they have the tax burden, as was seen with the Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. These people do not vote on that issue that you're bringing up. Fact, I tell you yeah, again. On facts. They don't care about they facts. They vote on those social issues. Democrats are baby killers, secular humanists, and demons. Pornography. So these people are, are hypnotized and controlled by the cult. They're but deceived. It's a cult. Revelation 12.9. Counterfeit. They are deceived. Yeah, the whole world is deceived. Right. Revelation 12.9. So counterfeit Christianity is a cult, and they are under the spell of the of this cult. Oh, they're under that spell of that guy who was in the Garden of Eden and uh, beguiled Eve. How come how come me and you are not under that spell? And and some of my friends, pro progressive friends, how come we're not under that spell? We're we're humans just like the idiots that vote Republican. We're we're, we're humans like them. Depends. Some people see certain things, some people don't. Are see. we deeper thinkers? Are do we have more brain cells? Do we uh are we special that we can see the truth and they can't? Maybe we do a little more homework. Maybe we uh, 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 open our minds But we're more. aware to the, to the real truth. We're yeah. aware and open to the real truth. But they're yeah, not. But a closed mind is already saying, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to believe you. I'm not going to hear what you say. You know, it's like... It's, I got my ideas. That's it. It's like when I, I do the same... I go through the same thing Gary Noll went through. My friends and, well... Some of my friends and all my family won't listen to me about holistic health and nutrition. Correct. They they, they rather listen to a drug pushing doctor Correct. and take the the uh, the drugs that do you a lot of harm instead of taking nutritional supplements. Correct. They, they'll say, "Oh, I'm taking too many pills already." Ah, they call the vitamins and minerals and herbs pills, but they don't call the drugs pills. Ah, but Correct. they won't listen. They did the same thing to Gary. No. So it's like they're not open to learn. Their minds are not open to learn. They're narrow-minded. They're like those people that say, you know, you tell them about vitamins, and they laugh and say, "All right, I just had this sandwich with uh, this Philly cheesesteak sang sandwich with a lot of cheese whiz on it. Oh, I love cheese, processed cheese whiz. It's crap. Oh, but I enjoy it." Yeah, it, these idiots out there that'll drink garbage beer like Budweiser and Coors Light and big? eat friggin' McDonald's poison that's not even real pure beef hamburgers. What about the big craze going on now with, chemicals. The, what? with the energy drink? Oh, loaded with sugar and chemicals. You don't need that. Eat, eat dried fruits uh, for your electrolytes, coconut. Uh, water uh, is loaded with it. Uh, sea vegetables, a ton of electrolytes. Don't drink garbage like Gatorade. It's all part. Listen, American food companies want you to be addicted to sugar. They want to load you up with salt, sodium, and sugar, and they want you to, you know, get sick so you can be a sucker it's, for for the drug industry. It's, it's a revolving that, door. It's that planned obsolescence thing. Because the more you drink of that stuff, the more money they make. The more you get sick, the Same more, thing with the the more old drugs. Days with the, uh, with the, the problems with American cars. They were planned on uh, a refrigerator. Right. Well, you can build a refrigerator last 30 years. They'll build them the last five. Light bulbs. Because then they'll sell more to you. Same thing with light bulbs. Hey, the Chevy Volt is the first uh, Amer uh, a mass-produced uh, 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 electric car to available to the American public, right? The Chevy Volt, I think, was the, the now first. Now we have the Tesla, though. Right, but, but, how many decades ago uh, would we have the Chevy Volt if there was no 40. if there was no corruption involved? 
40. 40 years ago, we would have <laughs> had the Chevy Volt. We would have had a total electric car, 100% without the bugs in it. We, 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was purposely kept hidden. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the uh, the greedy bastards. Now let's, let's finish up on Milton Friedman articles. We're done with that. Oh really? The Romneys have made no secret of the fact that they are wealthy and well beyond most people's imaginations. Hundreds of billions of dollars is a meaningless heap of someone else's money for the great bulk of Americans. So are multi-million dollar homes and garages equipped with elevators to whisk cars up off the ground to make room for others. Now we learn that the Romneys are also half owners of a horse. An incredibly beautiful and elegant animal. I happen to uh, love Arabian horses. I think they're gorgeous. Really? Go talk to Mr. Wayne Newton. I thought you were going to say go talk to Mr. Ed. <laughs> Because Wayne Newton raised those things. Arabians? And They're I beautiful. believe he's having some sort of financial difficulties. Is, is he is? I believe so. They're gorgeous horses. They're beautiful. So you might be able to get one from him. Yeah, okay? sure. I can afford an Arabian <laughs> horse. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. Da -da 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 -da. Anyway, back to the horse. One uh, that anyone would enjoy looking at. Real burp. Through the living room window. Huh? Even allowing that the animal was acquired mainly as therapy for Ann Romney in treating multiple sclerosis. Yeah, therapy. Therapy. Yeah, my ass. <laughs> with which she was diagnosed uh, some years ago. Not I'll, just for show at the Olympics. I would put her on mega doses of vitamin D. That's the first thing I would put her on, among other things. The horse further establishes the distance between the Romneys and the average American family. Mr. Blue Collar would most likely not be able to afford a $2,000 horse to help his wife deal with MS. I'm serious about vitamin D and uh, MS and uh, other uh, autoimmune diseases. I'm serious about it. They could take at least um, at least a thousand international units and up. I would say 1,500 international units a day. Let alone uh, a payout of a reported $100,000 for Ann Romney's therapy animal. Vitamin D is a hell of a lot cheaper than the therapy horse. This rather specialized therapy shows once again that if money is not a problem, then the wealthy have a much better way of dealing with debilitating diseases than the average American. Gee, isn't it easy for the rich to just come up with all these therapies? What about me and you? What if we, uh, you know, what if we uh, said, uh, gee, we, we, we require to eat filet mignon and rock lobster tail every day because it's therapy. We heard it's really good therapy. You think they'll subsidize us? I think they should. You think they should they give us the funds to get rock lobster I and... I think uh, they, people should believe. And uh, yeah. filet mignon? Yes. Was that the song by the B-52s? Rock lobster? Da 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 Remember that song? Rock lobster. Nobody objects to Mitt Romney's great financial success. I do. I do. Why, why, why? I do. You know, you often hear people all the time, well, I don't, you know, I have nothing against people making a profit. It's going to buzz in my head all day. Go ahead. Yeah, making a profit? I have nothing against the people making a profit. Well, I do. Well, what about a fair I profit? Do. He doesn't make a fair profit. And I do have a problem with Mitt Romney's great success. Okay? Let me it, just state that for I have a problem with, with ill-gotten gains. That's what I have a problem with. On the contrary. We support and endorse it. The conclusion nevertheless remains. He is not one of us. He does not belong to our class of people. Does not in fact represent us. 
No, hell no. I don't care what he jeans he wears. He doesn't represent us. We acknowledge his financial expertise and his business acumen. But what proof has there ever been that these qualities play paramount roles in being president? Yeah, exactly. See? I, got, I wear jeans too. And, when, and when, it, when it's real hot in the summer, I hardly wash socks because I don't need them. I wear sandals. You should put charcoal thingies in the bottom. Who needs to wash socks when in, in the summer, or if you live in, in, in the southern U.S. or Florida, when you can buy sandals? Charcoal? Yeah. I don't want my feet to be all blackened with charcoal. Joins. Huh? Joins. Joins? Germs. But I let it air out. I have other sandals. What do you... Germs? Germs. Nobody else wears these. What? Huh? Put the charcoal insole in there. Okay. It stays in here. All right, here's another dun, letter. Dun, 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 dun. This is about class warfare. Rock lobster, huh? Class warfare. Oh yeah, yeah there is class warfare. The rich yeah, started the rich it. The rich class are winning. The rich started it. The Republicans started it, and they're winning because they got everybody bought out. The politicians, the media. Of course, they're winning, and it is class warfare. But the poor didn't start it. Years of deregulation, unfair trade policies, massive tax cuts for the rich, and rulings and legislation against the American worker have transformed us into a country where inequality is more severe than it is in Africa, Europe, and Asia. The top 1% now own 40% of all the wealth. Wow. The bottom 60% combined own only 2% of that's, the wealth. That's why if the top 1% paid their fair share in taxes and carried the tax burden, that they will still be living high on the hog. It's relative. They, they own most of the wealth. And it's called revenue, which we do not receive. No, we don't. And, and when they outsource American jobs and manufacture overseas, their products should be tariffed to the hilt when they return these products to the United States for sale. Which side is waging class warfare? They are. Which side is winning? They are. <laughs> because they everybody's bored out. Uh, which side gets all the FaceTime on TV? They are. Because they, they control the, the media. The corporations which are the sponsors control the media. The thing of it is they keep saying the same stuff over and over and over which has never worked and people still believe it's going to work. This is called insanity. You know it's the definition of insanity is doing uh, uh, same thing. Same thing over. over and over again, and hoping for a different result. It sounds like the uh, the middle class that vote voted in the Republican Congress, right? That's what they do. It's insanity. Not, not you know why we're the brunt of jokes uh, internationally. They just voted in another Tea Party boob 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 in Texas. Oh, they did. Yeah. There we go again. Oh God, the red states. For the, senator, the holy roller, racist, bigoted, uh, uh, a zealot, fundamentalist cult followers, they voted in another nut in Texas. Why don't Texas just secede from the union? They wanted to. Ty, they, they, Harry wanted to. Good riddance to bad rubbish. <laughs> they don't consider him part of it. They consider himself yeah. part of the United States anyway. And what other what other racist states uh, should secede that we got down south? Uh, you know, South Carolina. They South Carolina. Yeah. Do, do they racially? I believe South Carolina was the one of the first to uh, secede. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the Confederacy. I'm talking oh, I about. Know, but they, they still believe. I'm that talking shit. about the people who want to deport somebody just because they look Latin. Alabama. Alabama. They want to. Uh, 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 they want to deport people, even if they're citizens, if they look brown skin or. And then Arizona. 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 
Alabama. Um, is it, is it, aren't sex toys illegal in Alabama? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dildos? Yeah, yeah. Texas too? Vibrators? Texas too? I don't know about Texas. So that means people and women in Alabama have to like uh, get a zucchini from the produce market or a, a large cucumber and put like plastic over it and use that? Yeah, I'm giving them ideas now. I don't know. I'm giving them ideas. Ooh. Ooh, ba uh, uh, Michelle Bachman and uh, all those. Hair curling irons. Excuse me? You can warm them up too. No, what are you crazy? You want to hey, you girls to burn? They're from Texas. Who cares? They're gonna burn their vaginas. Hair curling irons. Oh, you're you're sadistic, <laughs> Doctor Bill. Did you see that poster with the? Uh, hey, keep voting for Tea Party. Did you people. see that what poster the with the girls playing badminton and she was getting spanked with the the racket? Badminton. Bad. You've been a bad girl. Badminton. I can't. I, I can't believe the idiotic new sports they have in the in the summer olympics and baseball they don't have but they got you know well they got uh, basketball all played by uh pro professionals and they're kicking ass what about the tram Jesus. the trampoline the guys bouncing up and down on a trampoline you see the groups uh, the other day with badminton the badminton losing on purpose ping pong <laughs> well ping pong is very fast man. ping pong can get very can fast. be fun to watch by two people who are good at it yeah I'm not going to make fun of it. You can't watch it if they're good at it. I'm, I'm not going to make fun of ping ball. pong. I think ping pong is pretty cool. And I like the sound, the pop, 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 the little popping of the ball going back and forth. I like that, you know, it, it's really exciting when the ball, when it's a match that's going on for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, they walk away from the table for crying out loud and hit the ball back. Badminton? <laughs> that little, what do they call it, a shuttlecock? Shuttlecock. 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 A little feather, a little light gizmo that you hit and it goes up slowly and comes down slowly a real sport what's next a I'm a bi bipartisan type of guy yeah when it comes to poultry bipartisan poultry I'll take the right and the left wing without hesitation oh that's that's cute but I may be in the minority ever since Dan Caffey president of Chick-fil-a restated his opposition to same-sex marriage. Some folks on the left have been running amok, like chickens without heads. Speaking of chicken, I want to show the picture of Milton Friedman when we're, when we're finished. <laughs> it looks just like a chicken. No, but you know, continue, finish up the chick, the baguette. Yeah, finish up that article, then I'll show it. All right, thanks. Yeah, oh gosh. Some of the worst offenders are big city public officials. Boston Mayor Tom Menino does not want Chick-fil-A in his city. <laughs> Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel has said the franchise doesn't represent Chicago values. New York City Council Speaker Christine Quinn has urged New York University, the sole site of a Chick-fil-A franchise in New York City, to terminate its relationship with the chain. Yeah, but yeah, but who cares about how Chick-fil-A feels about issues in politics? They sell lousy chicken. That's why he should have kept his mouth shut. It's Shouldn't just chicken. He? Huh? I mean, what's next? Going going and asking the CEO of Popeyes and and Wendy's Yes, you know, we the, should all find their religious affiliations. Yeah, how do you feel and about... And treat them, you know, accordingly. They're not known for... They're not politicians. They, they, they're they running a food business. Who cares what they think politically or religiously? Well, that this is what... This is this guy, this Kathy Giambologna. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about those down south that vote this Republican crap all the time. It's the same thing. You see what happened? He put it out there. Oh, I'm against gays. Whoa! All the religious nuts come in to buy a Chick-fil-A. Listen, let me tell you something. Support. Let me tell you something. i got to be honest with you. I happen to love Popeyes. I don't like too much when it comes to fast food. I, I, I like White Castle for certain things. They got great sweet potato french fries now. They have great fried clams. They have uh, 
uh, codfish nuggets that I like. They have the best milkshakes, White Castle. Thick, rich, and creamy, and reasonably priced, and they're big. The oh, medium, huge. the medium is huge. Now listen, but I like Popeyes. If Popeyes, uh, if the upper management of Popeyes said they were very right wing and very Republican and supported Romney, do you think I'm going to stop eating Popeyes? Hell no. I love it. I'm going to continue. You know, I, I don't care what they do in their private life. I really don't. I like it. However, that, that's what counts. However, that's the entanglement in our economic system. Oh, man. See? By doing so, you continue to support him. I don't give a shit. I like Popeyes. I don't care what they, they think in their private life. But you are helping his bank account. This is my point. What? In other words, I should boycott certain industries because of their political affiliations? If you want them to change. But it's only one company. Doesn't matter. You have to hurt them in their bottom line. What if, what if I really need to purchase, I'll give you an example. I use the Brita water filter. It's from England. It has silver in it, you know, bacteria, kills bacteria and all that jazz. Uh, carbon uh, filter. What if there were uh, four different stores in my area, well actually there's a lot of them, that sell the Brita filter replacements. Uh, what if Walmart had the lowest price of all the stores? I have to be loyal to James P. Madonna's wallet. And guess what? I'm going to go to Walmart. Even though I hate Walmart and how they treat their employees, I got to think of yours truly. But I got to think of the wallet of James. And guess what? I'm going to go buy the Brita filters at Walmart. And guess what? And guess what? Well, guess what? Walmart loves that and has established that. Well, you know, I mean, but what about... They have made it. Survival. The entanglements. Survival in today's economy. The entanglements. Survival in today's economy. But he's surviving. You're not. You added to his bank account. You picked up the Brita water filter. Now, Great. is this similar to somebody going to a corporate chain and saving money instead of paying a little more money and going to a mom and pop store? Why do you have to pay more? Walmart's prices are low because of policies politicians have made and etc. Yeah. And his outsourcing of jobs to China and uh, buying Chinese crap and etc. China. They're outsourced, yeah. So that's why the prices are down. Oh, did you see that banner about Mitt Romney blaming the Chinese for all of our our problems, uh, you know, and it's not the Chinese, man, it's his rich elitist corporate CEO buddies in America that have made the decision to outsource to China. Correct. Romney's blame, blaming the Chinese government and you know the people well, over there. he's setting up a straw man for his his supporters. He supports He supports outsourcing. What is he talking about? What a lying son of a bitch. You know that people are going to fall for it? Of course. That's why they do it. No, it still works. It's not China's fault. It still works. These public officials need a refresher course in the First Amendment. I support marriage equality. But there is a difference between a corporation that actively discriminates against its employees and customers and one that is led by someone whose personal beliefs put him at odds with a segment of the population. Personal beliefs that are not contrary to the laws of the most states in the Union. Not supporting marriage equality is not a crime. If Chick-fil-A led a petition drive inside its stores to block marriage equality initiatives, then all those franchise locations, not just its president, should be the target of consumer protests. But regardless, a government crackdown remains unconstitutional. The selectiveness of the Chick-fil-A protest is hypocritical. I wonder whether there would be 
the same outrage over a company that was not southern based, Christian owned, and whose products were aimed mainly at the working and middle classes. For most of my lifetime, the New York City Ballet performed at the New York State Theater in Lincoln Center. The theater had a name change a few years back. An enormous financial gift from a benefactor enabled the renovation of the then State Theater. The donor's name is on the building, David H. Koch, one of the Koch brothers, Gee. funders of many things conservative. How co what coincidental, huh? The last time I checked, no one was boycotting New York City Ballet or Lincoln Center. My guess is there are many ballet patrons who would support boycotts of Coke Industries products, but wouldn't think twice about sitting there St. John and Prada clad rears in the plush seats paid partly by David Coke's gift. It's much easier to boycott something you don't purchase. I'd say Coke Industries and Monsanto are, are evil. Are are the two top companies that Americans should boycott the products they should boycott. You but know. again, as you brought up in your example, they can't because of 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 the system that they created for the for the uh, masses for the mainstream, where people are backed into a corner and are forced. To purchase according to their uh, to price, their wallet or their lack of funds, are forced to go to a Walmart, and um, and especially people with families that are trying to survive, and, and they create the situation where you're dependent on them for your very life. You hear that word? The word dependent. Dependent slave. But they create that. Society, they create that. But, but you see, people, listen to this, people. It's people on welfare that are the slaves, not those working for a big corporation. Yeah, because they, 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 they. It's all about greed. The bottom line. It's, 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 it's an evil. It's idolatry. It's a sin. One of the original sins. Uh, but you know what? The show that um, that you and I did, where I discussed uh, uh, Maui's doghouse in Wildwood, New Jersey. You know how many views that show is getting compared to all of the serious discussion that me and you have. <laughs> Maui's doghouse, fucking hot dogs, is is getting a lot of views, tons of views. Oh, people care about a freaking hot dog, but they don't care about you know, the world and America going to hell in a handbasket. Oh no, they don't care about that. But something stupid and trivial, like a hot dog with all the different toppings that go on it, people care about. You idiots, Americans are idiots and they deserve exactly the kind of government that they get. They ask for. So I find myself right. sympathetic to former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee on this issue. His call for a National Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day, Wednesday, as a response to the liberal blowback, drew hundreds to the franchise's Paramus Park Mall location in New Jersey. I know it well. Uh, we don't live that far from there. No doubt this is political calculus. Huckabee, as well as other Chick-fil-A supporters, such as Rick Santorum, are getting something more than just a wing and a prayer out of this. But politics and religion aside, the crusade against Chick-fil-A remains misdirected. Mm -hmm. The issue gained steam when the Jim Henson Company ended a promotional relationship with Chick-fil-A the, the, the because of the marriage equality issue. That was appropriate for Henson, a company committed to equality. 
it was one business making a strategic decision about not doing business with another company. There was no governmental interference in the process, and that is what is very dangerous about the Chick-fil-A pushback. Boston's Mayor Menino should restrict his public comments to the weather and the health of the Red Sox. If public officials want to wage a chicken war, it should be a campaign to ensure that all the people who process the poultry that land in Chick-fil-A and in other chicken franchises are treated fairly and work in safe environments. Instead, these officials are trying to stir people up against Kathy like he was the devil inside a tent revival meeting out of Elmer, Gant Elmer Gantry. He is the devil. Being led by the devil. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because he celebrates his Sabbath on the first day of the week. Sunday! The mark of the beast! Does, um... Does, um... Do all the famous uh, Holy Roller Evangelists celebrate their Correct. Sabbath on Sunday? Because they are all deceived! Does, um... Uh, Pat Robertson? Correct. All. But he's supposed to know better. If he read the Bible, he would. So their agenda is not the, okay. the, the Word of God. It's not huh? not derive their traditions from the Bible. Mark 7, verse 7 through 9. They worship me in vain, teaching the traditions of men. Well, they're... These traditions come out of the Roman Catholic Church, or the church from Simon Magnus that ended up becoming the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, there. And all the Protestant congregations came out of the Roman Catholic Church. Well, all these famous TV, um, very wealthy TV evangelists, they all seem to back Republican uh, Politicians, which which back the one percent, the elitists. So they might, they're 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 their true god uh, uh, of people like Pat Robertson must be money. It is money, but the fact of the matter is, and all you have to do is, like you told that lady, you have to do your homework. You got to check history. Go back to th A.D. three twenty five, mm -hmm. and you'll see that Emperor Constantine and the Council of Nicaea came up with the first day as the Sabbath and made it law. Yeah. That if you did not do that, follow that, you would be accused of Judaizing, and you would be dead. Dead! Killed it. Killed it and dead. So what do we have today? We're following the Emperor Constantine and the Roman Catholic Church. Which will which will play a huge part in the end times. And the tribulation. Well, it's played a, a huge part throughout history. Did it not? True. It killed 50 million people in its inquisitions and crusades, it converting by the sword. Yeah. Right. Rather than cite Upton Sinclair, we get Sinclair Lewis. It does not make sense to support a business that pumps money into campaigns against marriage equality, if you believe in marriage equality, but it is unconstitutional to try to use the power of public office to destroy a business that has done nothing illegal. That will only compel people like me who want marriage equality and don't particularly like fast food of any kind to walk into a Chick-fil-A. The company's sales boomed on Wednesday. Gays and lesbians are being encouraged to stage a kiss-in 
at Chick-fil-A restaurants today. No, oh, I saw pictures of that. They're making out. Didn't go off too well. In front of Chick-fil-A. It didn't go off too well. They were trying to they were trying to get a little extra Chick-fil-A with their tongues. They wanted a Chick-fil-A. They wanted a real Chick-fil-A. Chick, chick, chicky poo, filet. Today. Oh, you just line them up for me, Dr. Stephen Bill. Goldstein. Woo! Chairman of Garden State Equality. A New Jersey gay rights organization wisely is keeping his group out of the fracas. The what? Fracas. Fight. Oh. Chaos. Fracas. Fracas. In a statement, he said marriage equality is about something bigger than a staged event. He is correct. But even more important is the need to defend the First Amendment rights. Yes. If Chick-fil-A refuses to serve a gay couple or discriminate against gay employees, the wrath of public officials and the weight of the law should come down upon them. I'm starting to get hungry with all this talk about chicken. But short of that, no public official should prevent the franchise from expanding. Consumers will indeed decide if they want to eat more chicken, to use the words of a Chick-fil-A ad campaign, Ch chicken. and <laughs> while that process works itself out, some public officials should read more Constitution. Yes, right, right on, brother. All right, now I want to show you really quick, speaking of chicken and people that look like a chicken, He's kind of like Frank Perdue-ish. That's looking. right, he is. But he is one of the patron saints. Actually, he's a bigger patron saint than Ronald Reagan for the Republicans, right? Economic-wise. Economic-wise. Milton Friedman, the ugly bastard. Now I know why he cared so much about money. Because a guy that looks like this, if he didn't, if he wasn't rich... You got to ask yourself, how did he get married he, he in wouldn't, the first place? Yeah, he wouldn't... Yeah, nobody would want to be around him. He's like friggin' unbelievable now let me know hold on i don't i don't know if okay, i'm too high a little, a little more come in come in come in come down down a little bit down 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 lower down 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 it's like the rock lobster song down. let me go down dun, 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 dun. somewhere's around there i hope so you see it milton friedman i don't know let's just there you go okay 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 you see his kisser? Smoochie. His ugly his ball head and, and a big nose. Little little head. Very chicken like. Maybe he should go to Chick-fil-A. Well he can, he's dead. He's dead. He's taking the Deut sleep. And right. guess what? I bet he, he he couldn't bring one penny with him when he died. To meet his maker, right? Ain't that funny, huh? Yeah, isn't it funny? All the all the fortunes they amass when they're alive, the elitists, they can't bring one penny with them after they croak. I'm not sure if, if you can see this chicken-headed Milton Friedman, this this, uh, uh, this uh, real-life version of, you, of Eugene Krabs from the Spongebob cartoon, a very cheap, very stingy, greedy skin flint. All right, but that's him, the patron saint of all... Uh, right-wing conservative re re cons, Milton Friedman, not Milton Bradley from the toy store company. Oh God, I don't know. Hopefully you got to look at his ugly mug. Uh, okay, that's it. Thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions. I want to say hi to everybody. Uh, my very wonderful, fast-growing group called Holistic Health Talk. I, I want to say hi to everybody, all my members, and also the meal ticket, uh, my group which uh, supports uh, Indian and Persian club swinging, um, th uh, three-dimensional strength training, and also my friends at Honest Craft Beer Reviews, Mr. John Starodumsky, President, and uh, Mr. Red Rooster, President of Regional Food and Drink. 
okay and also the beer whisperer Tom Mulvihill I want to say hi to everybody and uh, also my, my close friend uh, Kelly Chen a, a progressive uh, and holistic health uh, activist from Singapore I salute I say hi to uh, Kelly Chen uh, especially to Kelly Chen um, with my lucky magic shillelagh I send them all my blessings okay take it easy all right say so long to these uh, people all right so long people dr. Bill do your homework study research don't just you know go off half cocked with, with unproven ideology do some studying man you know what did my grandfather used to say? A uh, uh, guy gave you a brain, uh, use, uh, use it instead for a hat rack? Uh -huh. How does that go again? Use your head for something other than a hat rack? Right. Yeah. Something like that. He had a lot of good sayings. He used to say, uh, you cut your nose off to spite your face. And he used to talk about Pennywise and Pound Foolish, which is, which is greedy Republicans. Mm -hmm. You know? Greedy rich Republicans. Pennywise and Pound Foolish. Think about it. Think about it, people. Educate your minds. And stop. And keep an open mind. Keep an open mind and stop. See, that's the problem. Preoccupying. They stop preoccupying yourselves with watching stupid shit on the internet. And with counterfeit Christianity. Watch something educational, like this show that you just watched. Stop, stop occupying your minds with counterfeit Christianity. Well, because they're too lazy to study the Bible. That's correct. And, and learn what the Bible really has to say. That's correct. So it's a lot, because they're lazy, it's a lot easier for them to believe. They're ministers. The, an idiot pastor. You know how many, you know how many asshole jerk off pastors I've met in person? I met one today. Rude as can be. Just because they have a, a, a certificate on the wall that says ordained minister, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they're like a real cool person, that they're, they're, they're okay, you know. It certainly doesn't mean that they know anything about the Bible. That is true, because maybe, maybe they learned from another pastor, and that pastor learned from another pastor, and they don't really know their Bible, you know what I mean?